Hi, everybody. Good to see y'all. Church pew back there. Pun intended. Good to have y'all with us again. Uh, it's good to see Mama Good. Glad you got your safe and sound and everything. To overly spoil the grandchild, which is a good thing to do for grandparents. It's not a good thing for the parents to do because that's too much for And then you get rotten brats. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> we are going to finish up Luke chapter 15. We've, we've been here for quite a while. This is our fifth and final lesson. We've been looking at the whole chapter, but primarily, most of our lessons have centered around what we call the parable of the prodigal son. In all four of our previous lessons, the father has played a vital role. He's been there all the time. But today, in this fifth lesson, let's focus on him himself. We've talked about all of these parables, about separation from God. God is there. We've talked about reconciliation, coming back to God, no matter where you're at. God is there ready, willing, and <laughs> so longing to welcome you back. We talked about the younger son. God was there. We talked about the older son. God the Father was there. It is amazing, this story, that Jesus chooses to give us a picture of God the Father. Undoubtedly, the Father here in the parable represents God. He shows us a view of God that is unlike any view of God in any world religion today. Most have a distorted view of God. This view we see is unlike the Jewish view of God. A God who loves righteous people but hates sinners. He has a lot of things to do with the righteous people but he doesn't have anything to do really with sinners. It was for their benefit and because of this attitude that Jesus told them parables. Because the Pharisees grumbled that he received sinners and eats with them, Jesus told them three parables. They couldn't conceive of a God who received sinners. And not just receive sinners, but one who would go and search for them. <coughs> they might agree that if a man came crawling back on his hands and knees and praying for pity, that he might find him. But not this. Not welcoming back, open arms, hug him, put the best robe on him, give him a ring, put shoes on his feet, welcome him back to the status he was when he left. Not that. No Pharisee had ever dreamed of a God like that who cared so much for sinners. One Jewish scholar, one great Jewish scholar, admitted that this was the one absolutely new thing that Jesus taught about God. This view of God is unlike the Muslim view of God and their belief about God. Uh, Jesus shows us their view of God. They believe that Jesus was a great prophet. But he was not God in the flesh. He was not crucified. The incarnation and the cross have no place in their theology because they cannot see a God who would care that much to do such a thing. 
They can't conceive of a God taking on flesh and being humiliated and crucified for sinners. Buddhism has a similar story to this, but in it, the father hides himself from the son for some 20 years, watching him and testing and, and making sure his penitence is real before receiving him back. Thank God our God is not like that. And it's, un it's his, unlike the Catholic view of God. Now, I will admit to you, I don't know a whole lot about Catholicism, but it is my understanding that one of the reasons that they pray through the Blessed Virgin Mary is because she's more tenderhearted and more sympathetic. They need to see the picture of God in Luke chapter 15. <laughs> the prodigal didn't need to go through a mama or anybody to touch the father's heart. And this view of God is unlike many Protestant views of God. Many see him as the stern father figure. One who has to repent and repent to finally get through. Many see him as being aloof. He pays hardly any attention to us. And if he does hear our prayers, it's just because he didn't have anything else to do and we have, the prayer happened to come up as he went by and heard it. That's not the view of God that I see presented in the Bible. The correct view of God is given to us here by Jesus telling the story of a father who had two sons. He shows us a God who cares. And we see three aspects of his caring. First, we see the evidence of it. It is evident that the father cares. It's evident in his actions. Not just the prodigal son, but all three parables. The lost coin, the lost sheep, and the prodigal son. <coughs> I grew up in a family who had livestock. Many around us had livestock. Some of you had livestock. What do you do when a, one of them gets out? <laughs> You look for it. Now, I'm sure you don't, and I've never have or heard of anybody quitting until they found the livestock that got out. When we're lost to the carelessness of others, he searches diligently for us. When we rebel and leave him like a willful, stubborn child, he waits longing for us to come home like a parent. I tell you, God cares. I know He cares. I know He cares for me. There are a lot of people that care for me. I'm thankful for it. Angels in heaven care for me. They rejoiced when I obeyed the gospel. My friends, care for me. Friends back home, some of them I talk to weekly, some of them it's a text or a Facebook message, new friends I'm meeting and gaining, my friends care for me, my brother cares for me, my mom and dad care for me, and then there are those that care for me the most. My kids and Julia, they know me the best. They know me better than anybody else. And it is amazing <laughs> that they still love me. But even as much as they love me, as much as they care for me, they don't love and care for me as much as God does. 
And he loves and cares for you and all of us the same way. He is no respecter of persons. We see here that another thing evident about God's caring is that it is universal. Now that's hard for some people to accept. It was hard for the Pharisees to accept. Uh, they didn't have no problem seeing how God could love them. I mean, they deserved it, right? But they couldn't see how God could love publicans and harlots, <laughs> publicans and sinners. It's hard for us sometimes. We visit the old folks' homes and see these sweet, elderly, old men and women. And it's easy to see how God could love them. Visit a prison. It'd be hard to see how God could keep <laughs> from loving one group. But to see him have the same love for the other group, that's very difficult sometimes. But it is true. He cared for all the sheep. You know, the funny thing about straying sheep or straying any livestock, it's usually the same one that keeps getting out. Now, I have never in my lifetime heard anybody who has cattle, sheep, goats, any livestock, say, well, that's the third time that cow's got out, she can just stay out. No, you go find the cow. God wants all the sheep. He wants all the livestock. He wants all the coins, too. What do you do when you drop a penny? Go ahead, answer. It's okay. What do you do when you drop a penny? Anybody? You pick it up? <coughs> Good for you. Because there's a lot of people that don't pick them up. And that's the attitude most people have. I drop a penny. Oh, it's just a penny. I'm going to waste my time picking up. It's just a penny. Thankful for you people who pick up pennies. Because that's <coughs> what God does. He wants all the coins. Not just the silver. Not just the dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels. Just the pennies too. This father, father had two sons. He loved both of them. The lesson goes both ways. You might have had the, the same initial thoughts that I did in first studying this. And at first we might think, oh, that old prodigal, he should have been like the elder son. I needed to learn how much God cared for the prodigal. And then to take a closer look at the two sons. Look at that elder son and say, that elder son. Why would you want to be like him? You know who the elder son is in this story? It's the Pharisees, the ones who thought they were right. They were the religious people. They were them some church people. Be careful. Accept your righteousness. Exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> Luke 15, 1 and 2. The Father, God, prodigal, publicans, and sinners, returning to God, and the elder son is the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought of the prodigal needing to be like the older son. God forbid we be as the Pharisees. When I think of all the harm the Pharisees did then, and all the harm that the Pharisees in and out of the church are still doing, I hope that they come to see the tenderness of the Father who loves them as much as he does sinners and realize that they are receiving the same grace that the sinner receives. Those outside. Those who have left. Luke 15 and 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So the father went out and <coughs> pleaded with him. God will run. If you're a prodigal and you're coming back to God, he'll run to meet you. But he'll also walk. If you're having a bout of stubbornness and hard-heartedness, if you're dealing with this scandalous mercy of God, he'll walk to you. One thing we see about caring, one thing we know about caring from our own personal life is that caring is costly. When I was younger, yeah, I'm 14, I watched my dad watch his best friend die from diabetes. It was not fast. It was not easy. It was a long, drawn out, terrible death. Dad met this friend in preaching school. He and his wife, and mom and dad, <coughs> probably formed one of the closest relationships I have ever seen. Always stayed in touch. And luckily, only lived less than two hours away from each other. So we got to make plenty of trips there, and they come down to visit us. That was one of the hardest things I ever saw my dad go through. It was hard because he cared so much. What about children? When we have children forevermore, we have not only our own problems to anguish over, but also theirs. Caring is worth it, but it does cost. But no one's caring has cost them as much as God's caring for us has cost him. Imagine how he felt when Peter denied his son. Imagine how he felt when Judas betrayed him. Imagine how God felt when Jesus fell beneath the cross. And how he felt as he hung there, dying, taking on the weight of sin for the world. And he might ask, how do you know he felt that way? Because I'm a father. And I know how fathers feel. All of us fathers do. Where do we get that feeling? It is innate in us. It is in our makeup. Because we are created in the image of God. The Father. Feel sorry for God sometimes. And the question arises, is that appropriate? Is it appropriate to feel sorry for God? Have you ever read the story of the prodigal son and felt sorry for that father? Father had two sons. The younger one wanted his inheritance now. And it was given to him. And he left. And it was gone. 
for a long time and comes back in that shape. <laughs> Boy, howdy, what the father went through. And then he welcomes his son in, prepares a feast for him, and then he has to go deal with his older son who he loves just as much. But it was over here in Palin. Because little brother who was dead is alive, who was lost, and is found. And we're celebrating. He was sad when the prodigal was gone, and then he returned, and, pro and the father was joyful. But the sorrow wasn't over. He had his elder son's attitude to hurt him. Oh, how we sometimes hurt God. You know what this rejoicing fatted calf party was? It's a family get together. You know what we're doing today? We're having a family get together. We hurt God by not attending family gatherings, the assemblies. They're very important to Him. They ought to be just as important to us. We hurt God by not studying His blood drenched <coughs> book of salvation to hear how he cares for us, to know who he is and what he would have us to do about it. By not talking to him. Fathers, you know how it feels not to talk to your children for an extended period of time? God feels the same way. How do we talk to God? We talk to God through prayer. That is a conversation with our Father. And it hurts Him when we don't do that. Though His ear is always open to us. You remember that old song by Gene Autry? That silver-haired daddy of mine? If I could recall all the, heart, all the heartaches... Dear old daddy, I've caused you to bear. If I could erase those lines from your face and bring back the gold to your hair. If God would but grant me the power to turn back the pages of time, I'd give all I own if I could but atone to that silver-haired daddy. Don't let it be too late to atone to your father. We can somewhat atone, make up for the sorrow that we have caused God. And we can replace it with joy by repenting. There is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. The 99 just persons who need no repentance. It's not that he's not joyful about the 99. They don't need a party. We can replace sorrow with joy by repenting. Sometimes privately. Sometimes publicly. I'm going to tell you something. That aisle ain't just for coming down when you decide to obey the gospel and need to be baptized. It's not just for alien sinners. It's for prodigals and elder sons. Just the same. If you haven't been down that aisle, since that first time and you've been a Christian for some time you might want to do some self reflection to see how you might be hurting God because you might be in the category of the elder son prodigals in the far country don't go to heaven. 
elder sons at home in that condition don't go to heaven. Don't be either one of them. God the Father loves both prodigals and elder sons. And the one place they come together is in the Father. In the family. To be part of the family again, <laughs> the prodigal son had to get out of the foreign country and come back to the Father. And he ran to meet him. To get back in the family, the elder son had to change some things too. He had to change his attitude and he had to change his thoughts. He had to quit harboring grudges against the rejoicing of receiving back the prodigal son. He had to come back in the house. And God walked out to him to get him to do that very thing. You know, most of the time we look at these prodigals or we look at these parables negatively. The lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son. But look at it more positively. Look at how the Father cares. Look what He does for us when we are lost. When we become lost. When we leave. And notice the one thing that is consistent, or one of the things that is consistent in all three of these parables. What happens when the sheep is found? The shepherd brings it home rejoicing. What happens when the lost coin is found? The woman called all her friends rejoicing. What happens when the prodigal comes home? Father is the fatted calf and everybody gets together rejoicing. Don't be outside. There is no rejoicing outside. If you're subject to the invitation in any way, if you have any need whatsoever, we'll pray for you and we'll pray with you. We'll come to the next time.